How often do you feel comfortable talking openly about your period? Well, not often enough, says journalist and author Emma Barnett. She says we're far too shy to talk about, complain about or be honest about them. And she says if men had them, we'd never hear the end of it and they'd take the time off work. Talk about that in a moment. <laughs> uh, after writing a book all about periods, uh, she's here now to uh, start the conversation. This is the book. It's about ba -ba -ba -ba. bloody time. Is the name uh, name of the book. And you say ba -ba. that we we live in a world of of oversharing. We mm -hmm. share everything, but this is the one area that isn't. I think it's remained stubbornly taboo, and mm. I think there are uh, several reasons for that. It could be rooted in religion. All of the Abrahamic faiths say you're, you're impure at that time of the month, and and teach that sort of stuff through to. You know, we've seen big tech companies forget about periods. When Apple launched its health tracker, the menstrual cycle wasn't included. We yeah. still don't have an emoji on our keyboards for periods. You asked for one, but it got rejected. Yes, yeah, so there's been several requests, and um, the consortium in San Francisco that run what comes onto our keyboards, I mean, there are 12 train icons, of different <laughs> trains we have, but we don't have a period emoji. Um, when they got the first design through, which was white knickers with a, a drop of blood on, which I think everyone would know what that what meant, that meant yeah. um, they rejected it on the grounds of it wasn't universal enough. So now it's just a red dot. So we, we don't have anything yet. Oh, so there, isn't, so, there isn't anything um, It's all. meant to be one coming. It's, um, not, it's not universal, even though it pertains to 50 percent of the world. Indeed, and the other 50% owe their life to a rather healthy menstrual cycle, you could argue, yeah. uh, very successfully. So, no, and, and that leads to, I'm sorry to the country of Japan, people misappropriating the Japanese flag, yeah, a white course. rectangle with a red oh, dot gosh. in the middle. Yeah. And teenage girls say, I'm on my Japan, I'm having my Japan. That's how much they've sort of had to create so their own. So is this something that's being passed down? Because I'm wondering, so it's a sort of, I'm very open with my girlfriends, yeah. not so much with my male friends, I wouldn't say, just because I just don't think it, they'd be that interested, I would have thought. But my girlfriends and I are very open. My mum wasn't so much. I mean, even to say the word period wasn't something we sort of said, it should we'd have our days or something. Yeah. Like, she'd make up a different word for it. So as I've gone on, I think I've tried to be a lot more open about it, but is it something that's sort of a generational thing that's not being passed down? I, I still think people who are younger struggle with it as yeah. well. I mean, the creativity around euphemisms for period, I've got more than 150 in the book yeah. in an appendix. I mean, my favourite is riding the cotton unicorn. Right. I think that's quite creative. Uh, it's pretty millennial as well, I have to say, because mm. still people are coming up with different ways of just not saying the word period. Well, yeah. I feel very proud of the fact that um, I've got two, uh, two grown-up daughters yeah. um, and have always been incredibly open, um, very open about periods. There's Good. never been a moment where it was uncomfortable or it was distasteful or anything like that in our house. All very open. So I'm very happy with that. I am, I'm, and I'm perfectly comfortable, couldn't possibly be embarrassed. But you say um, that, uh, that if men had periods, then this would be a whole different ball game. I think you'd be on the corner of the street bragging that you're a three-pad kind of guy. I think there would be how much pain you're in. I think men would never invest in dainty little zip-up bags to go to the toilet with in the office. They would probably put their tampon behind their ear and just wander over there. But bear, bearing in mind that you say that sort of quite flippantly, flippantly but, but men are notoriously bad about talking about themselves. But I think where pain is involved, it could become almost an Olympic sport of bragging rights. Because if you think about it, women have only been in the workplace for, mm. I don't even know, I mean, maybe nearly 100 years in some mm. areas of work. But men designed the world of work with just them in mind. Of course they did. I'm not blaming them for that. But I do think if this is something they were contending with every month, you know, maybe you might not agree with the characterisation of bragging, but I think that would be the case. Um, and lots of people have joked about that. There's a whole hashtag to do with it where mm. people put these things. Uh, I do think there'd be free sanitary towels mm. in, in every office, the, the other... in every school. Well, this is something that you can pay you know, for, and for, I, for, for. I think, I think that would be normal, because when they mandated that toilet paper and soap should be free, mm. they would put that there. It wouldn't be a luxury item you were taxed on. Yeah. So the... Um, exactly, it shouldn't be a luxury item, for sure. Um, the, you had, uh, for, for a long time, you had pain with your periods, yeah. didn't talk about it really, really with anyone, just thought, well, periods are a bit painful, you know, just, that's just the way it is, didn't feel the need to discuss with it. Two decades later, you get diagnosed with endometriosis. Yes. Had you have spoken or felt able to speak more openly about it, would you have got that diagnosis earlier and not been living in pain? So I think I did what a lot of women do, which I, I am very open about it, I did talk about it, but I didn't talk about it enough with doctors. I mm. didn't push for enough answers. I just got told I had very bad period pain. That's a fancy word, dysmenorrhea, and you get told to have a very strong case of paracetamol and ibuprofen. Yeah. Um, what I didn't do was I didn't think that 
being in pain was something I should challenge. So right. I just sort of lived with it and accepted it as mm. my lot. But I was in an awful amount of pain and it was only when I started trying for a baby. And I'd always been dreading trying for a baby. I had this feeling that something wasn't quite right, the way right. I used to nearly feel like I'd black out every month, yeah. I'd feel very weak. Um, I, I knew something would go wrong and, and, you know, two years of trying, no baby. And finally, a friend of mine who happened to be a gynaecologist, I was leaning with her at breakfast one morning in pain, said, Emma, why can't you sit up? And I said, oh, I'm always like this at the start of the month when I'm on my period. And she said, that's not normal. Mm. That's not yeah. normal. And then I ended up having a, a diagnostic operation which led to the diagnosis mm. of a very painful condition. What, um, what is it that you would like? I would like periods to be unremarkable. I really would, in the sense of... That doesn't mean you have to go and talk about them all the time, but it means that you feel that you can't... You've talked you about aren't. them on Woman's Hour and got complaints. Yeah, I mean, you uh, do. It's Woman's Hour. Yes, because women also have been infected with the shame about what it is to have pain, be a woman. It's in the darkness of our pants. You want to bring it to light. People don't want to talk about it. So in the same stuff. way that you might have a monthly migraine, for example, yes. you were, and you would just come into the office and say, oh, oh. I've got a migraine, I had a migraine yesterday, it's completely wiped out. Women lie all the time. We did a study and we found they'd rather say they had diarrhoea than they had periods to their bosses. Yeah. And, you know, there are, we're hilarious about that as well. We're hilarious about our periods. It is quite an extraordinary thing. We bleed every month and don't die, so the internet But like you said, that's goes. the whole reason we have children and that we are yes. here. Yes, but, I mean, there was a colleague of mine who, you know, she got her tampon stuck and she rang me and I was in a taxi and I was just I couldn't think of what to say and I just said, bear down. Bear down. This was the best bit of advice I could give her. The taxi driver thought I was advising my friend on how to give birth, and at the end of the conversation, when she was successful, said, did she have it? I said, yes. Yes, she did. <laughs> and I didn't really say much more than that. But the point is, there's loads of funny stories in there as yeah. well, but by being able to not talk about it really at all, mm. you can't laugh or cry openly. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very much indeed thank for coming you. in, Emma. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to talk about, and that's the book that we're, uh, we're talking about now. Uh, proudly, without uh, any hindrance whatsoever. Yes. Even though we have had a few complaints, but there we go. <laughs> oh, gosh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you.